Hello, I'm Lucinda Florio. Today on Around and About New Jersey, we are going to visit the city of Patterson, which was one of America's earliest factory centers. As you watch this program, you might ask yourself the following questions. First, why is Patterson located where it is? Second, how did Patterson earn its nickname, Silk City? And third, how did the lives of the factory owners differ from the lives of the factory workers? I hope you enjoy your visit to Silk City. Welcome to Silk City. That's what Patterson was called 100 years ago. This is the Great Falls. The story of Patterson as the Silk City began right here. So grab your hat and bundle up as we go around and about New Jersey. Patterson is located in Passaic County in the northeastern section of the state. The Passaic River flows north out of the Great Swamp and loops around to the south and empties into Newark Bay. Where the Passaic River passes through a gap in the Wachung Mountains, it drops more than 70 feet over a cliff. This is the Great Falls. Look how powerful that water is. Patterson was established here, all because of the Great Falls. What does the Great Falls have to do with Patterson? The Great Falls has everything to do with Patterson. When Patterson was young, there was no electricity, and the power of fast-moving rivers was the best way to run factory machines. This was called water power. How does water power work? Factories used water wheels. The river current turned the water wheel, and the water wheel turned the gears, shafts, and belts, which ran the machines inside the factory. Who's that? That's Alexander Hamilton. When George Washington was president, Hamilton was the Secretary of Treasury, the man in charge of money. He wanted the new nation to have both farms and factories. So he encouraged a group of businessmen to build a factory center. Hamilton felt the factory center should be located near a city, like New York, where products could be sold, and that it would need a source of energy, like a river, to provide water power. The Great Falls was a perfect spot. Water was taken from the river before it went over the falls. It flowed into man-made canals called raceways because the water raced through them. The factories were built along these raceways to use the water power. Raceway Park is located in Patterson's Historic District. Even today, you can see the raceways and the factory buildings that use them. Do factories still use water power? Not anymore. By the time Patterson became the Silk City, most factories use steam. Today, factories use electricity. But why was Patterson called Silk City? That's a good question. For a long time, the factories in Patterson made many things. Gradually, silk became the most important product made. In these factories, silk was woven on machines called looms. At the Patterson Museum, Jack DiStefano and weaver Larry Ash showed us what silk weaving in factories was like. 
anyway, this is our Silk City exhibition that we have at the Patterson Museum, and it focuses on the textile industry in the city of New Jersey called Patterson. You know where silk comes from? Yes. China? One other one? Japan. Correct. Raw silk was imported from China and Japan. Silk is a fiber that comes from the cocoon of a silkworm. Which we have. And you'll notice that they're of a fibrous nature. And it's actually these fibers that are going to be the, uh, they're hair-like, but they're the fibers that are going to make a skein of silk. That silk before it is woven. As a large coil like this, it's called a skein. Here in Patterson, it was woven into ribbon and cloth. You know, say I'm wearing a silk shirt. Obviously, to get from this stage to here, it requires some little steps. And one of the steps we're going to use to illustrate the process is our machine right here. Does anyone know what this machine is? Yes. A loom? A loom. A loom is a machine that makes cloth by weaving together crosswise and lengthwise threads. The crosswise threads are inserted through a gap in the lengthwise threads by means of a device that goes back and forth, known as the shuttle. These crosswise threads are on a spool, called a bobbin, that is inserted into the shuttle. Uh, how old are you? Nine. I'll be, I'll be ten in six days. I'll be ten in oh, five months. Well, nine, ten, you'd be getting ready to go to work, not going to school anymore. In the mill, you'd be looking for your first job. You'd be a bobbin boy. The boys would come to the factory. They'd empty out the empty uh, bobbins. In the early days of Silk City, children as young as ten years old worked as bobbin boys pushing carts full of bobbins from one machine to the other. Girls the same age worked in the factory, too, in the spinning room, where they loaded empty bobbins with more silk. Children sometimes worked 10 hours a day, six days a week, because their families needed the money. How would you like to work in a factory that was cold, dark, and loud for 10 hours a day? You'd I still hate it. You'd I'd hate call, it. I'd watch sick. TV. You'd call in sick. I don't think they let you call in sick, and then there was no TV. <laughs> Over 100 years ago, almost every family in Patterson had someone working in the silk industry. That's why people called Patterson Silk City. Lambert Castle. Today, it's a museum. What comes to mind when you think of a castle? Elegance. Royalty. Knights in shining armor. Big. That's what Kathleen Lambert, the factory owner who lived here, wanted people to think. He built this castle on Garrett Mountain, overlooking Patterson. It'd be like a movie. It'd be just like a movie set, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's magical. No. <laughs> he wanted to impress people with his wealth and power. Now, every night when you come home and you have dinner, is your table set just like this? No, I just want company or a holiday. Yeah, my mother too. She would put out the silver and stuff at holidays and when company came. Well, if you were Mr. and Mrs. Lambert's guests, you would be served five different courses. With... 30 different dishes for each course. These are a lot of dishes to wash. You're a kidding. lot of dishes to wash and to carry. You're and servants would bring all those dishes in from the pantry. Mr. Lambert was one of Silk City's wealthiest men. He wanted not only to live far away from his factories, but also high above them. Did everyone in Silk City live in a castle? Oh, no. Many workers stayed in neighborhoods around the factories. 
Some other workers, however, moved to suburbs because by 1900, trolleys could take the people from outside Patterson to work every day. A weaver from Italy, Pietro Botto and his wife Maria, built this house in Haledon, across the river from Patterson. Hello. 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 Welcome Hi. to the Botto House National Landmark. Here. I'm so glad that you're going to be here. My name is Bunny, and I'm the granddaughter of Maria and Pietro Botto, and we're going to go inside and visit the museum. Come on in. Let's go to the Botto House. Bunny Kukin grew up in this house. Bunny's grandmother took in boarders for one meal a day as extra income. Her grandparents also rented two, three-room apartments on the second floor. Even a skilled weaver, who was better paid than most factory workers, needed the extra money to support a family. Ooh, this is Bado's dining room. And the table is set for the noonday meal. The noonday was the big meal of the day. And notice you have soup dishes. So first you ate your soup, and then you had your meat and vegetables, and then you had your dessert. And dessert was fruit and nuts and cheese. And you know what else Mrs. Bottle had? She had boarders. What is a boarder? A boarder is a gentleman that worked and needed a place to eat. He was here ahead of his family, earning money, so that he could bring the rest of his family over. Now he needed a place to eat. How was living here different from living at Lambert Castle? Well, um, it's, the house is so big that they actually need like servants to like serve the food and clean the house and everything. The dining room in the Lambert Castle was, was, a, was a lot bigger than the one in the bottle house. That's right. In Silk City, have factory food. owners and factory workers table. live yeah. very and differently from each other. Napkin rings. Now we know three things about Patterson. Why the Great Falls was a good location for a factory city. Why people called Patterson Silk City. And how the factory owners lived much differently from the workers. Visiting Silk City has shown us how Patterson grew as its industry grew. Many manufacturing cities with industries other than silk grew in a similar way. And that is how we became a nation not just of farms, but of factories too. Uh, concept. I mean, a lot of things he gets excited about, I take for granted. Mm -hmm. And, and if, uh, the ability to do that is fantastic for me because I'm not looking at things totally differently. Mm -hmm. And I'm enjoying uh, a lot of things that I would have never enjoyed before. One of them is uh, rap music. <laughs>
<laughs> when you guys, uh, when you come into this program, you make an agreement to do at least an hour, spend at least an hour a week with the uh, mentee, but uh, you guys actually end up spending a lot more time than that. Oh, yeah, I would say so. Um, for Deshaun and I, we usually uh, meet every Saturday um, from about noon to about 3, maybe 4 o'clock, depending on the activity that we're doing that day. And the time goes by real fast. Mm -hmm. I mean, I never think of, uh, of the time that I'm spending with him mm -hmm. as being, you know, an extraordinary amount of time. It just, it's just natural. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we do all kinds of different things. Um, some of them are very simple, like going to the library and researching uh, about where Deshaun lives. Mm -hmm. Deshaun lives across from uh, Newark Cathedral. Mm -hmm. One of the things that uh, naturally of interest to him is, th is that cathedral. Mm -hmm. and one of the things we've done is research it when it was built, how it was built, um, and also by doing that, we also research a little bit about his home, where he lives, mm -hmm. how old his home is, uh, things of that nature, mm -hmm. and he was really excited about that. D Deshaun, what kind of things do you like to do? What are the fun things you like to do, you look forward to doing? Uh, I like going hiking. Um, <coughs> you like hiking? And J.D. lives uh, out uh, in the country, so you get a chance to go out and uh, see some different things, uh, certainly some things that uh, you don't see in the city, right? Yes. Like what? Cows, horses. Oh. Mm -hmm. People leaving their bikes out in the um, driveway. Is like that, that right? L can leave it out without it being stolen, of course. Yes. Mm -hmm. JD, uh, when you when you spend time, you said that uh, after a while it gets to be like a, a, an extended family. And I know some people may be concerned if they're thinking about being a mentor that, uh, well, maybe I won't have enough time to spend, but uh, after a while, do you get used to it? In the oh, absolutely. In fact, n now the way I view it is I make the time for Deshaun. Mm -hmm. um, I s block out a certain amount of time on Saturdays for Deshaun, mm -hmm. and I don't allow anything else to interfere with that because he's important to me. Mm -hmm. He's now part of my life. I hope he I'm part of his life in the same way, and that's important. Mm -hmm. That's, to me... That's one of the high priorities in life for me now. And um, I think it's important as a mentor to do that. The worst thing I think you could do is to pop into someone's life and pop out again. Mm -hmm. uh, if you made the commitment, you got to st uh, stick that commitment. you got to live uh, up to that commitment. And for me, I made a commitment to him. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, I make the time for him. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important. <laughs> Deshaun, do you make him listen to rap music? Most of the time. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, you also, I understand, have to be on your P's and Q's at school because uh, you were periodically uh, checked upon by, uh, checked on by J.D. here, right? Mm-hmm. J.D., can you talk about that? Do you actually call the school? Because I know the teachers, the teachers look forward to that. Oh, absolutely. Um, I make it a point to check in with his uh, homeroom teacher uh, 